Last Live MMA and BKFC Fighting Fans. Look who I got to have today, Sean Wheelock. And we are inside the Mississippi Post Coliseum. We're in just 48 hours. We are going down with BKFC 7. Sean, what are some of the must-see fights that the viewers need to turn into this weekend? Susan, well, our co-main event is very interesting. It's for the BKFC heavyweight title. Arnold A.J. Adams, who won that title by winning the tournament. This is his first fight as the champion against Chase Sherman. Chase Sherman, of course, a UFC veteran. Currently, he's fighting MMA and island fights. Chase Sherman had his promotional debut against Sam Shoemaker. That was a draw. It's an outstanding fight for Sherman, despite not getting the win, because, uh, of course, Sam Shoemaker is so talented. He was the runner-up in the tournament. And Arnold Adams, not necessarily the favorite when that eight-man field was announced mm -hmm. June of last year, comes through as the champion. Very excited about that heavyweight title fight. Yeah, there's also another title fight on the line. So let's talk a little bit about that. So we're talking about Christine yes. Faria uh, against Helen Peralta. Helen Peralta is an Invicta veteran. Faria has come in, has looked outstanding. She's 2-0 in BKFC. I know that she was really interested in fighting Beck Rawlings. That now won't happen because <laughs> Beck Rawlings has left the promotion. She's in Bellator. But Faria wants to show that she's the top female fighter in this promotion. That's the feature about. It's mm -hmm. absolutely stacked. And the main event is pretty intriguing as well. Leonard Garcia, who had his yes. BKFC debut earlier this year in Cancun, Mexico. Uh, he fights Jim Allers. Allers had his promotional debut for BKFC on our Florida show in June on the undercard of Malinaji Lobov. Two UFC veterans, two guys incapable of a boring fight. You know, Sean, you've been in combat sports for such a long time. When Feldman approached you to start BKFC1, had you ever even heard of the sport of bare knuckle? Yeah, I had. I'm, I'm a gigantic fight nerd to the surprise of nobody. <laughs> and I'd actually spoken to Dave Feldman for about two years, just talking to him about fighters, ideas, talking about what commissions might be open to this. So that was the culmination of, of at least two years of working with yeah. Dave Feldman, and we've become friends along the way. I was introduced to Dave Feldman, a circuitous route. I'm very close friends with John McCarthy. John knows Bobby Gunn. John introduced me to Bobby. Bobby said, I want you to meet somebody, and that somebody turned out to be Dave Feldman. What I really admired about Dave Feldman, yeah. he could have taken the easy way out, Susan. He could have gone out of the country. He could have gone to one of the numerous non-ABC member Native American casinos or, or reservations and held this fight. He wanted to have full sanctioning. That's what he had in Wyoming, BKFC1, June of last year. He has that here in Mississippi. We're very close in Kansas, Alabama. It's past yeah. the state legislature. Uh, Massachusetts is talking about it. New Hampshire, New Mexico, uh, Florida, of course, we had our debut. Uh, first ever BKFC and first ever bare knuckle show in June. This is very close to what happened with Art Davey in the UFC and MMA 25 mm -hmm. years ago. First states are saying, no, that's the end of civilization, the worst thing <laughs> we've ever heard. Then they're like, okay, tell me more about it. Then they're like, yeah, why wouldn't we do that? And that's the arc that we're seeing with Bare Knuckle. Speaking of Bare Knuckle, what do you think is the appeal of the sport? Because it's like an old sport, but a new sport. And I feel like fans have really embraced it. Well, I think you've nailed it. It's the fact that we're taking a rule set that originally began in the 1700s. It was the London Prize Ring rules, which evolved into the Broughton rules. And those were the bare knuckle rules. And that's from the mid 1700s all the way through the late 1800s. The sport evolved into gloved boxing, the Marcus of Queensbury rules. And as a, as a big, gigantic fight history nerd, I can tell you that the reason primarily for gloves was not to protect the opponents, it was to create more knockouts. Bare knuckle fights were getting very long, very tactical, very drawn out. Some people felt that they were boring. It sounds great to read about somebody fighting 78 rounds, to actually stand and watch 78 rounds may not have been so great. So. They introduced gloves, which were already there for training, knowing that more knockouts would be produced because people would be hitting harder. What Dave Feldman has done is he's brought back that mindset from the 1700s and the 1800s, but with a modern sensibility. Working in the clinch and dirty boxing from yeah. MMA, but still keeping it pure. No spinning back fists, no elbow strikes, no kicks, limited fighting in the clinch and an active clinch. That's what it appeals to me. I, I really think that bare knuckle can become the midpoint between MMA and boxing. Maybe because MMA is a much younger sport, MMA fans and fighters seem to have embraced it quicker than boxing mm -hmm. fans. Although there's a little bit of a turning point now with Pauli Malinaji and Artem Lobov. Boxing fans are starting to pay attention. It's the next category of combat sport. It's not a hybrid, it's yeah. not a turn on something, it's the next category of, of combat sports, which again, has its roots to the United Kingdom in the 1700s. 
Speaking of bare knuckle, I'm not sure all our fans know that you were actually a boxing referee at one point, right? I started in all this craziness as a boxing referee in my very early 20s in Kansas City, and I wound up holding licenses in four states. And even as my television career got going a little bit, I continued to make cameo appearances, refing a couple of times a year, mainly in my home state of Kansas. But five years ago, I was appointed to the Kansas Athletic Commission, and technically, we oversee the license holders. As a boxing referee, you're a license holder. So the only conflict of interest that they saw was I couldn't be a license holder and oversee. Basically, <laughs> I had to stop refereeing. I do miss it. But right. if you hear any of my broadcasts, no matter the sport, I'm always talking about the referees, putting them over, because referees are so important. Yeah. As a commentator, it drives me crazy when commentators say right. the referee. The referee is a human being. The way they referee can have a bearing on the fight, mm -hmm. directly, indirectly, subtly, overtly. So I always talk about the referees, and usually after a fight, I'm either hanging out with the fighters or I'm hanging out with the refs. <laughs> All right. Favorite bare knuckle fight so far? I, you know, I really enjoyed the Bobby Gunn fight, yes. even though it was quick, just because Bobby Gunn is such a legend. And I'm convinced nobody on this planet knows more about bare knuckle okay. fighting than Bobby Gunn. That was amazing. And then Artem Loboff and Jason Knight. Oh, yeah. Uh, I've commentated between MMA, boxing, lightweight, kickboxing, grappling, bare knuckle, a few uh, odds and ends, mixed match fights and hybrid rules fights, maybe 3,500 fights in my television career. That's in my top five, Loba versus Knight. And I hadn't watched it. I rarely go back and I'll watch a fight I commentated. I just move on. But I was showing some boxing friends of mine who hadn't watched bare knuckle. I said, let me show you a fight that I think will get you into the sport. And we watched that fight, and it was even be better than I remembered. It was an amazing fight. And I think it's one of those that people are then drawn in. Uh, it, it's very close to For uh, Forrest Griffin and Stefan mm -hmm. Bonner, and I referenced it on the air that night, that this is maybe that tipping point fight where people are paying attention, saying, yes, I see the appeal to this sport. All right, before we go today, is there anything else you want to add to tell our viewers about BKFC 7 this weekend? Well, BKFC 7, it's the continuation. This is the major bare-knuckle promotion in the world. No disrespect to what anybody else does, yeah. but this is the gold standard. Dave Feldman, the founder, the CEO, it's his vision, his rule set, the level of fighters, the quality of the officiating, the venues, the cities. This is only going to get bigger and better. As a commentator, this is a dream. People think that this is like a parking lot brawl. It's actually extremely, as you know, Susan, technical. I love commentating technical fights, and it's absolutely outstanding. I get to do it with my boy, Chris Lytle. <laughs> All right, BKFC7 fans, thanks for watching.